Hey, it's me, OG Duffy. Find myself in Chatham today, game hunting. So we've got a scene next year. We've got a uh, cash converters or crack converters. And there's a little toy fair going on down there. So uh, let's go and explore, see what we can find. And a few charity shops and the rest of it. And uh, I hope you should do all right here in Chatham. So uh, wish me luck. Here we go. kicking off with the actual toy fair now i didn't buy anything in this toy fair and i didn't see any sort of really game related stuff there's a few mario toys but apart from that i'm not a huge toy collector i've got plenty up in my loft but um i always like looking though to be honest i mean here we had i think these are he-man figures if i recall i do should remember that bumblebee fella i'm sure he was i'm sure he was he-man let me know in the comments guys am i right or wrong with that one um some lovely star trek models i mean but that said i'm not a trekkie guy I'm more Star Wars, but you already knew that from the games room itself, you know. Um, but hey, I know it's really popular and the models are very intricate there. They're quite nice detailed models, so uh, I'm quite impressed with those. Uh, a few Batman figures there. I have to be very careful with stuff like this. Now, these really appeal to me. This age or genre of wrestling figures, I remember these really, really well. And I have to sort of rein myself in because before you know it, I'd start collecting <laughs> toys and other stuff. And Mrs. OG wouldn't be particularly pleased because we'd have loads of what she calls... Um, Perp High Call Treasure. Anyway, there was this stall here. Pokemon figures and collecting cards in general. Uh, Magic the Gathering, all that sort of stuff. And Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, bought some of these. They were for my son for Christmas. Christmas is gone, so I can say now. Pop figures. I have a few pop figures, I have to admit. But again, as I say, I stop myself with stuff like this. Because I'd get into the, the pit of just collecting it all. And now into the CEX branch. Chatham's branch is really good. I do like this. And in the window here, Metroid Zero Mission and uh, Gunstar Heroes there. Look for the Mega Drive. Gunstar Heroes, £130. Is it me or has that dropped off over the years in price? Or am I just completely wrong? Let me know in the comments, guys. I've always known it's a heavy hitting title, but I'm sure it's dropped off over years. Uh, and Metroid Zero Mission there for the Game Boy Advance. A hundred and seventy pounds. Is that worth that? Is it that really that collectible? I mean, in nice condition, both of them looked it. I mean, I don't know if they've got instructions and stuff. I'd imagine they did have, but uh, some nice bits in this store. So let's carry on. Nice Pac-Man light there. I do own one of them. Now these caught my eye here. Look at the price of these. Okay. Breath of Fire 3 on the PS1. Uh, 55 pounds. And this, Evil Twin for the Sega Dreamcast, £170. I mean, I'm well out of touch with Dreamcast prices, but is that a good price? Uh, let me know in the comments, as always, guys, because I know quite a few of you guys do collect the Dreamcast. Micro Game Boy there, £130. I don't know, is, is that worth that? I'm not sure it is, you know. Game Boy Advanced SP there, £75. Found them a lot cheaper in another retro shop near me, actually. Master System 2. And that GameCube there, look, that's a um, Resident Evil special, that one. What do you think on that price, guys? I now head into the store to carry on looking in the cabinets. And I'm not disappointed. There's some great bits in here. I mean, these loose carts, I don't think they're fairly badly priced, really. Defender and Joust there, £6. A copy of Busby there. I think that was £6 as well. And uh, the old uh, X-Fighter, uh, X-Men, Street Fighter game now. X-Fighter, what am I thinking, eh? <laughs> uh, Neo Geo link cable. Now, I've got a Neo Geo handheld, but £55 for the link cable. Quite expensive, isn't it? Obviously very collectible. Now, that GameCube controller there, £65. Since when did controllers start fetching that sort of money? Super Mario 3 there. Uh, many people consider that to be the best platformer ever. And for £15, sure, I know it's a loose cart, but not too bad. Now, that Castlevania over the back there for the N64. Didn't think that was badly priced. Don't know if it had a manual or not, though. Because uh, it wasn't in there for that, really. And it's weird when I do these videos, because quite often I look back and I think, oh, I could have looked at that, or oh, I should have looked at that, you know. But I didn't. Anyway, the PS2 shelves... Always some great titles on PS2 and PS3, as you guys know. I keep banging on about it. And they're really still reasonably priced. Now, there was a volleyball game I had on the Xbox, the original Xbox, 
Was it Dead or Alive Volleyball? Something like that? Do you guys remember that one? Yeah, I quite enjoyed that. You skimpy women running around playing beach volleyball in their bikinis. That was good little... But the game plan, that was really, really good. Anyway, back to the PS2. So what we're looking at here. Kesson 2. I don't know anything about them games, um, but they're fairly priced. I mean, what was that? Three quid for Kesson 2? Not too bad at all. As always, guys, let me know in the comments any pickups you've had of late and also anything I've missed on these shelves that were really classic titles that I maybe should have looked at closer. Now we go, quite a big range of uh, GameCube games in here and I didn't think that was badly priced. Wolverine for four notes, you know. Um, GameCube, sexy little system, innit? We all liked it. I uh, don't hear anyone really slagging it off or anything, so it's a nice, nice system. Different prices here. I mean, they're Metroid games, a couple of Metroid games in here, but nothing really, no real big heavy hitters in here, but uh, fairly priced, I felt. Uh, PS3, I keep banging on about it, you know I do. Uh, lots of games on this system at stupid money. Call of Duties, Grand Theft Autos, Battlefield, don't get me wrong, they're in excess. There's tons of them there, really, really are. And obviously, don't get me started on FIFA games. But I, I'm loving collecting for the PS3 at the moment. And I'm not collecting anything in particular. I just find a title like this one here, Lord of the Rings, War of the North. What's not to love with that? It's Lord of the Rings. It's £6. Honest. I love Lord of the Rings. I love anything fantasy. So you can't go wrong for that sort of money. Um, this here, Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy. I didn't know anything about this title. Uh, any good? Should I have picked this up? I didn't pick it up, guys. Was this a title worth collecting? Let me know in the comments, as always. Um, some lovely bits here, and the artwork on some of the Marvel Capcom and that Mortal Kombat DC Universe. I just love the artwork on a lot of them as well, the covers. Now, I'm seeing a lot of these sort of collections. You've got the Metal Gear collection. I mean, that one's £28 for the three titles. And there's a sort of a Silent Hill collection as well. Uh, Portal had that on um, on the PC back in the day. Great little sort of puzzle game, you know. Very popular. Now, Saw there, £8. I paid a tenner for this uh, oh, about six months ago. So, are the PS3 prices generally dropping off? Or is that just on certain titles only? I love the artwork on that. I mean, look at that. That's brilliant. Look at that Street Fighter game there. Look, and guess what? That little shiny corner, Capcom in the corner there. You know me, guys. I do love my Capcom games. I did not pick that up. And then this caught me. I look, Thor, the God of Thunder. Mate, got to love a bit of Thor, ain't you? I do like them Thor films. I think Ragnarok's my favourite. And then back to the cabinets, um, a Mega CD game there. Cobra Command, I've got two copies of that in my collection, uh, a 10 hour each, them ones, but some nice games here, I mean Sword of a Million and uh, Rings of Power, now I seem to remember Rings of Power, but I don't think I ever recall playing it, and at £20 I didn't think that was too bad, PlayStation controller for tenner, or if you want the silver variant, £15, £5 difference just for the colour, a few PS1 titles, Gran Turismo, now, that really came out of a boom, didn't it? What a game that was for the time. Check out the yellow in on that Dreamcast controller. £8 for a Dreamcast controller. But look at the yellow in. It's really, it's really quite bizarre. It's like a pattern. It forms like a pattern around the uh, plastic. Then I hit some charity shops, guys. This first one, dry, nothing at all. Your usual group of DVDs, uh, your jigsaw puzzles and CDs. A lot of people were picking up DVDs and flipping them. Now, this one, I got excited. Add some games in there. Now, let's just pause on this for a moment. Now, there's been a few debates of late, and myself included. I did a, a video about charity shop pricing. Now, as you can see there, all of them games there, all right, there's nothing decent. There's nothing worth picking up, for me personally, anyway. But you know what? A pound each. Now, that is priced fairly and competitively alongside CEX. I have no problems with charity shops at all. But when, for example, they have a copy of that, say, for example, Britney's Dance Beat, and they want a fiver for it, that's my issue. I mean, a pound, that's fair. But as always, your comments, guys. Let me have your thoughts on, on this, you know. And on to the final charity shop that I visited this day. Plenty of books, plenty of CDs, plenty of DVDs, and your usual sort of a array of jigsaw puzzles. But no video games at all. But believe me, the uh, cash converters more than made up for this disappointment. 
So here we go, cash converters, Chatham. And straight away, these grabbed my attention. Look at that, Super NES Control Deck. Now, am I correct in saying that that's the original release? That's the first version of the, of the SNES that got released in the UK, 179.99. What do you guys think on that price? Is that a good price? Yes or no? Next to it, there, the Evercade Versus. Now, this is sort of the console version of the Evercade, not the handheld. I do not own an Evercade. Uh, I don't feel the need to, really, because I've got plenty of uh, sort of emulation setups, which are fairly decent so i don't really feel the need to have one of these but a 49.99 was that a good price let me know in the comments let's carry on if you thought that snes was good just look at this one here look at that a thing of beauty pure beauty street fighter 2 the turbo edition there 219.99 or 95 uh was that a, well, a good price? Now, the reason I really like this was it took me back to my first Super Nintendo. Now, I had the one before this, just the Street Fighter 2 one, not the Turbo. Oh, and, and to me, that is just iconic. It's the one that really does stand out. Let's get into the store. And great excitement. Some Wii U titles. Unfortunately, nothing uh, that I needed for my collection on this outing. Although that cover was a bit ropey there. Um, had a look along here. What else we got? Some plenty of Wii titles. I pick a few of these up at some great, great prices. All right, well, we'll come to them at the very end, which is shortly. When we finish this bit of the shop, this is the last bit of the tour, and then we'll go and see what I exactly got and picked up. Okay. Um, plenty of DS games in here. Had a look along it. Texas Hold'em. Now, I do like a bit of poker. The Texas Hold'em rules being the, the version that I play. And then I saw this. This took me back. Missed. What what was that? Was that a PC release originally? Was it Amiga or something like that? On the DS, that was uh, £4 in there. And uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS 999 Now, Missed and that Super Mario 2 were both cheaper than what you'd pay for at um, CEX. But we'll come to that shortly, my pickups. I'll go for a few pricings, okay, because they're very good in here. Um, and again, PS3 games because you can't beat some PS3. Now to the pickups. Before we get to these pickups, and there's some great ones, guys, there really are. Let's go grab a beer as always. To the beer fridge. As you can see, I've, I've had quite a bit of stock for Christmas. Uh, these are the specials down here, though. So let's have a look. What should we go for? We've got some nuts ones in here, guys. Um, mm, uh, uh, decisions, decisions. Let's try this. <laughs> Through. Oh, <laughs> sounds a bit naughty. Let's give it a go. Fru Kolsch. Hey, my pronunciation is probably completely all wrong and all over the place, but this my brother gave me this one for Christmas. Yeah, he likes his beer too. And look, I've put this up. Open bottle opener. I put it up today. Bit of a time out here. So let's christen it. There it is, christened. It works all right. I was waiting for it to fail, but now it works. Uh, just that's the pop, great thing about when you put the walls up like this, you can put things into it and all that. But anyway, that all important taste test in the Xbox glass that I've got on one of my 50 unwrappings. Here we go, guys. The pour. <laughs> I'll taste it already. <laughs> Oof. Bit of a head on that one. Okay, 4.8 as I say, half a litre, 500 mil. So here we go. It's, um, I'd about to say it's very green in colour, but I think that's the Xbox logo on the glass seeping through to give it a, a green tint. Let's have a smell. Quite a pungenty smell. It smells stronger than what it actually is. Let's have a try. That's actually very, very nice. I don't know where that's brewed or who brews it. It's a German beer, a premium German lager. Very good as well. So, Fru Kolsch, <laughs> excuse my pronunciation. I uh, obviously never very good at languages. Fru Kolsch uh, is very nice, guys. Give it a try. But let's get to that all important game pickups. 
What did we get in chat? And well, guys, I can always say this. I go to chat probably twice a year on a game hunt, and it never disappoints. Honestly, the CEX there is particularly good. Don't know why. I always have a lot of decent retro bits in. And uh, the uh, cash converters, or crack converters, as I call it, is hit and miss. Sometimes you can go in and find something. Sometimes you can't. But let me tell you now, I did very, very well at the, uh, the cash converters. Okay. That's coming up. And on top of that, my final uh, item I'm going to show you is a Christmas present I bought myself. I bought one of the heavy hitters for the Wii U collection. <laughs> I'm not going to say how much it was because the missus might be watching. <laughs> but anyway, let's get on to it. So CEX first. I went around the, um, as you saw, the, the toy fair there. Wasn't an awful lot of stuff there. No video game stuff anyway, really. Um, so into CEX, which is pretty much next door. Great. So, first game I picked up, all had manuals, by the way, is God of War, uh, God of War 3, God of War 3. Now, I know God of War Ragnarok come out recently on the PS5 and stuff, but confession time, guys, I have never played a God of War game. Except for the tumbleweed. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't. Um, I don't know, it's just, uh, but as you can see, all complete, as I say, when I go to CEX, I always get them with a manual. Unless it's a Wii U game, I might give up on that. But now, God of War 3, like I say, they've all passed me by. So I'm looking forward to giving that a run out. Am I in for a good game, guys? Let me know in the comments. Next up, another PS3 title. Because you know me and the PS3, I love the PS3. I keep banging on and on and on about it. Lord of the Rings, War in the North. Lord of the Rings, War in the North. And uh, just as a sideshow, look, here's a little uh, picture I got of Gandalf. Um, I wrote to Ian McKellen his agent, and they sent me that photo signed. And as you can see there, even in the, the ink, he's done like the little room for Gandalf and that. So uh, so I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, and I've never played this before. I love the films. I just think they're absolutely amazing. You can watch them time and time and time again. They're timeless classics, mate. Uh, but here we go. So, War in the North. Uh, it says, uh, uh, an out of Gorefest, Total War, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if it's like a strategy game or not, but... Um, Hey, I'm looking forward to playing this. I really am. I'm looking forward to playing this. I think it's the hours. I mean, that God of War game, that's going to take hours, isn't it? I've got a Wii U game, guys. I've got a Wii U title, which we'll be putting on the shelves as well. So I've got a couple of Wii U games, which I'm showing you. And obviously that big heavy here. Sonic Lost World Deadly 6 Edition. Okay. Uh, Wii U, obviously it's got the manual because I picked it up in CEX. £22, that one. £22. But it's another one off that Wii U list, guys. And as you know, I find it so therapeutic adding these uh, to, the, to that shelf, which I'll be doing at the end for you guys, all right? Uh, a couple more pickups that I got in um, CEX there. Now this, £2.50, gun, gun. Now I do seem to recall playing this back in the day, um, but my memories of it have gone, you know? Uh, so. I'm quite excited again for this. I'll be honest, there's some really good little games I've picked up here, but I think so. Anyway, I mean, you guys might disagree, and you've, you're welcome to disagree. Just drop it in the comments as always, guys. But £2.50, that. That was a nice little touch. It looks bloody good. Yeah, nice condition, lovely manual. Look at the manual in that. Happy days with that one, guys. Gun. Experience the brutality, greed, and lust. That was the West. The Wiki Wiki War. <laughs> now this game, right, Nicolette was with me and as we walked around, she said, did you just go wow? <laughs> so, oh, yes I did. And I had a moment, I went, and I looked at the shelf, it was Wii games, Wii games. And I went, wow. And I got all excited, right, and giddy and grabbed this game. And it is this, right. <laughs> it's three pound title. Sid Mears Pirates. Sid Mears Pirates. I loved Pirates on the Commodore 64 back in the day, and I've also played a lot of it on the uh, the Sega Mega Drive version. Might have been a Genesis car, I can't remember. But it's just one of my all-time favourite games. And I never knew it was on the Wii, so I saw it and I went, Pirates! Wow! And she was like, I can't believe you just said that aloud. I did, I did, guys. But now I'm really excited about this. Whether it's any good or not, I don't know. Um, obviously, it's going to be a bit of an upgrade, I imagine, to, to what I was used to. Uh, but there we go, Sid Meier's Pirate. So I'm really, really pleased. And <laughs> I got mega excited about this one. I really, really did. Oh, life, 
Live the adventurous life of a pirate. I do, I, I love uh, pirates. It's a great, great game. Okay, so that concludes what I've got in CEX. Next up, oh, this is a single pickup, this one. I got this. Me and uh, the missus went to the cinema uh, before Christmas and uh, I walked past the CEX by the cinema. So I'm just popping in. So I won't be a minute. And I went straight to the Wii U shelf. And they had a copy of this because I looked it up online first. And uh, it's not a bad copy. It's a good quality copy. In the past, I've seen it, but I've always passed up on it because it wasn't the best quality. But this one's all right. Xenoblade Chronicles X. Xenoblade Chronicles X. There we go. A £20 game, guys. I can't recall if this was £25 in recent months. And they've dropped the price on it. Hmm. But anyway, it's good condition, that one. Uh, nice nick. So that will be going up on the Wii U shelf shortly as well. So that was a little individual one that I just snuck in. Then I went to CE, no, sorry, cash converters or crack converters in Chatham. Now I find this is a very hit and miss store. Um, sometimes you can go in, you can get an absolute bargain. Sometimes you can walk in, there's just nothing at all. Um, but some of the stuff they had in that window that you saw in my, my video, I mean, that's snares and all that. Great to see out in the wild, you know, because you just don't see stuff like that for sale, really. Unless it's in, like, a specialist retro game shop, you know, which we have in our areas. That's a tasty beverage, Brett. <laughs> right. But on this trip to crash, uh, cash converters or crack converters, I've got some decent deals. I've got Red Steel 2 for the Nintendo Wii. Red Steel 2. Uh, I know Red Steel 1, I think, got quite a bad... Um, review but i've heard good things i think it was aaron who lives local to me who pops around occasionally and plays some games and stuff i think he told me red steel 2 is actually very good i could be wrong aaron let me know in the comments but one pound 99 now if i was to buy that in cex it's three quid it's only a, a pound saving but a pound saving nonetheless and a nice condition manual with that one because you're called about the manual you've got to have the manual as little nat would say uh, okay so there we go Again, another one I'm looking forward to playing. I've got, I've got too many games, just not enough time. When retirement comes, I'll make the most of it. And then I've got this, okay? Now, this I thought was a great, great price. This was £8.99, and it's Mario Party 8 for the Wii. Mario Party 8. Now, if I went into CEX, this would cost me £18 to buy. And if I wanted to trade this in for store credit, that would give me £11. So... I could have literally 9, 10, 11, I could have just walked straight up the road and got another couple of quid on credit. So what a great, great deal. So this is where, um, you know, uh, Cash Converse does come in on its own sometimes, especially with that type. So I was really, really pleased with picking that up. It's not bad condition, got the manual, etc. So I was really pleased with that, but it's a decent price. Eight ninety nine instead of the, uh, the £18 that CEX are charging for it. Now we come to two boxed NES games. Now, I've got to admit, I didn't spot these until I went to pay for them. And by an account, we had a load of NES games. I mean, I say a load, probably about 20. All boxed and all decent conditions for, for NES titles anyway. Because as we know, NES, cardboard packaging, get bashed about. It's old stuff now, you know. Uh, but I picked up two, two of them titles, all right? Let's do this one first, because this one's not as obscure as the other one. A very classic title from the arcade classic... Marble Madness, Marble Madness. Okay, and as you can see there, that was £8.99 for the NES. It is boxed. Uh, I have no idea on the condition of the manuals in that. I know, I can feel they're in there. Um, but we'll, we'll do a bit of an unboxing of them shortly, all right? I'll show you the condition then. And then one more NES title. And I was pleased with this because it's a game I hadn't heard of. And it's called Solstice, The Quest for the Staff of Demnos. £8.99 solstice there. Now looking on the back, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not. I might be showing some video if I can find some. It looks very bit sort of 8-bitty to me. It looks a bit like sort of the old 8-bit um, spectrum style graphics, but obviously with colour. So uh, I'm not sure about this, but I love sort of RPG and anything dungeon-y, dragon-y and all that. So uh, yeah, please. And I also liked a shout out to Crack Converters for their packaging. It's only like a food bag, but then they're putting the stickers on the food bag not on the uh, box um, boxes at all, but a box on, on condition on that one's really good. So I've got the obvious wear and that around the edges, but we'll come to that. Now, guys, the Christmas present to myself. 
because I'm worth it. Some guy on one of the, uh, the a group I belong to was selling some his Wii U collection. And uh, unfortunately, I was a bit late to the uh, race and I missed out on quite a few of the titles. And I asked him, have you got this? you got that, got that. No, 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 no. But uh, have you got this? And he said, yeah, I've got that one. So uh, I <laughs> picked this up. And it is The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Now, I've been told this is not a very good game. The eaters came down on us. But it's on that Wii U full set power list, so I have to get it. I paid more than I'd like to have paid. But, hey, you know, needs must when you're going for the full collection. Let's be honest, I'm starting to get to them heavy hitters now, so I'm going to have to start... Um, Forking out a few quid, I think. But anyway, I'm pleased to get that one off the list. So basically, what we're going to do now, chaps, we will go and take a look at the unboxing of them two NES games to see the actual overall condition. And of course, a bit of therapy for me, we are going to go and add them Wii U titles to the Wii U shelf and see how many more we've got to go on that collection. Okay, let's take this Marvel Madness out of its packaging. As I say, I was really pleased with the way they packaged these up, you know. Took a bit of time over it. This was the Chatham branch, by the way. Okay, there we go. Like I say, these are so, you know, dodgy. God, that's a tight old fit as well. There you go. If you guys want cheap bags to sell your uh, NES games, you can get these size food bags. It's a perfect fit. Tight as, but mate, it works. Look at that. He says, squeezing it out. Right, there we go. Overall, packaging's not too bad, I don't think. You know, um, obviously at the top there, Bit of a dodgy bit there. Right, what we've got inside. Let's go for the all important inside. Tabs are complete, which is a good sign. What we got, what we got, what we got. Pop that there. Oh, so there we go. Cover there. Got the plastic sleeve, just a plain black one. Instruction manual, looks all right. It's thumbed through, but hey, for a game of this age, what would you expect? And there is the cartridge. Sticker label is in great, great condition. Now, what's the year of this? 19... 1988. So there you go. It's not a spring chicken. So I'm really pleased with that. I think that was goodbye for nine quid. You know? Not the greatest NES title in the world. But, you know, I ain't complaining. Solstice now. Again, this one. Same price, nine pound. And I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't see them till the very end. I mean... I should have done my own work a bit, really. Took a photo and they said, look, mate, I'll come back. And got a bit of research, some of the prices, you know. But I just, oh, well. Oh, well, oh, well. Things happen, don't they, for a reason. So here we go. So here we go. Solstice, the quest for the staff of Demnos. I did think it said Demons originally. NES version. See the quality. Looks all right. Got a bit of wear and tear there. But to be honest, that's not too bad. I mean, for, for how old was this one? Let's have a look. Solstice 1991, this one. So it's a newer game. Oh, it's saying 1990 down the bottom there. So it's about 89 90, I'm guessing, looking at that. Okay. It feels complete, but is it? Little Nintendo seal sticker there, look. Tabs are complete, which is a good sign. Look at that. Nice tabs. And the cartridge, I can tell straight away, has no wear and tear on it. And there's an instruction book. Oh. And we've got a bit of... Polystyrene to sit on the bottom of the box to keep it keep its shape, I suppose. Hey, who knows? You guys will. Anyway, this instruction book. Weird because it's that way, but then when you open it, it flicks that way. Oh, I see. It's like a notepad. Okay, look at that. It's pretty sexy, isn't it? I quite like that. Just showing you the back there. You can see what I mean by about the the eight bit bit. You know, the eight bit graphics. Very traditional sort of spectrum and stuff. And there you go, you've got the Nintendo seal on this, this plastic sleeve. And the cartridge label there, looking very nice and clean indeed. So obviously it comes from a collection where they looked after their stuff. Quite a nice couple of finds there, I'm pleased with them. Adding these Wii U games to this collection. I'm loving collecting for the Wii U, I really am. But like I say, we're getting into the heavy hitting realms now. Uh, but hey, I'm starting to knock a few off, so all was good in the hood. So first off, alphabetically, let's get Sonic. He's going to go in here between Sonic All-Stars Racing and Splinter Cell Blacklist. I really must get round to removing the labels on these. So let's pop him home to his new home. There you go, Sonic Lost World. You've got your new home. And then we come over to this side here. Uh, next up, we've got The Walking Dead. I'm really pleased with this one, guys, honestly. Warriors, uh, W-A-L. 
He's going to go in now. Between Unwritten Tales 2, sealed that is, that one, and Warriors of a Rocky Hyper. That's sealed as well. So he's between a couple of new sealed titles. And then Xenoblade Chronicles X, uh, WX, there we go. He's going in between We Fit You and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wind. I really got right around to sorting these out alphabetically correctly. Now this ain't too bad. The rest of the shelf there is in an awful state, but I'm waiting to get the rest of the collection down from the loft before I really go to town on them. So that concludes the pickups from the Chatham Game Hunt. Like I say, I go a couple of times a year and it never disappoints really. Um, I've got to start stretching my legs a bit further. I've got to go a little bit further afield because I've had a few invites from, from tubers to go and uh, join them on some game hunts and stuff. And I might just go and do that, you know. Mix things up for you guys at home. Anyway, guys, I've been OG Duffy. Follow, like, do all the great stuff. Subscribe and uh, look after yourselves. And let me know in the comments what pickups have you had of late, guys. I'm really pleased with this lot. I think I've done really, really well. I think I've got some great, great games. What do you think? Let me know. Anyway, guys, cheers. Look after yourselves. Stay healthy. Another beer is in, in, in order, I think. What do you reckon? Laters.